It's nitrocellulose in them. So give you a positive bee test. And on the basis of this worthless evidence and a beaten confession, these guys went to jail for a hell of a long time. And they threatened their families. They said, if you don't confess, we're going to start on your wife and kids. Okay? Now, what happened then was a very interesting one because that matter went to court. It was chucked out by every layer of the British judiciary. And it eventually ended up before Lord Denning. Now, Lord Denning was the master of the roles in England. And he was, generally speaking, an intelligent, witty, humble, reasonable kind of a guy. But you must read what he said about the Birmingham Six. He said, I cannot possibly let this trial go, this, this appeal go on, because the vista opening up in front of me is so horrible that, that the police may have lied, that they may have beaten the living daylights out of these guys, that they may have extracted false confessions. I cannot let this case go on. I would have thought that's a very good reason for making certain that the case got. But Denning obviously was getting it to the end of his career, and he probably wasn't working all that well upstairs, although he's made some good judgments at the same time. But he was so state-minded in terms of that criminal trial that there was a major miscarriage of justice. And, and the same with the Guilfords. The Guilford for exactly the same way as operandi, exactly the same guy, same confessions. Another one, by the way, I don't know if you've heard about it in the UK last year. Um, they had this baby basher craze. So basically every s department of social child welfare or whatever they call it in the UK, um, every school teacher that was seeing a child with a bruise was phoning the child welfare and somebody was coming. And over a period of about eight months there was a craze. And the craze happened because some child died at the hands of its parents and the social workers hadn't done their, their job properly. So it's like a pendulum swinging, you know? One minute they're Protestant, the next minute they're more Catholic than the Pope. And all the social workers were now seizing babies to the extent that in Northwest England they ran out of places of safety for children. And you had all these parents who'd done, you know, the child slips, you know, I've got seven children. I can't think of one of my kids that at some stage of her life wasn't covered in bruises. You know, because they, they get knocked and they're playing in the playground and what, what, what. And they were seizing all these kids. And the parents became pariahs in, in their community because they, everybody was, ooh, you know, that's the parents of, they've been beating their child and all the rest of it. Meanwhile, some judge then stood up and said, you know what, there's enough of this, it's impossible. That in the last six months, everybody in Blackburn has started beating their children. I cannot believe this. He said, he turned one case away and he ordered them to go back and review all the cases. And all the kids were handed back, you know. So you can get these crazes. And that's what happened with the Birmingham Six and the Guildford Four. They were told, we want people behind bars and we want them behind bars quickly. Now just <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> just before you go, Paul, from your point of view, also David, from yours, very often in I would just use, we get the thing about I was beaten in police custody. Yeah. Is there ever an element of truth to that? Because I always get the feeling that the guy's just always trying to get off. When I first joined the police here, and I was in the UN police before I came here, and I think the standards were slightly different. When I first joined the police here, I ended up uh, in, in the detective branch and it seemed to be standard practice that when you arrest somebody you beat the crap out of them and I was shocked I couldn't believe this in fact I arrested a police officer one night because he jumped over a desk and beat my suspect so hard that he broke his nose so I arrested him and all the other cops in the station were giving me dirty looks because I arrested this cop for beating my suspect but in those days it was very prevalent and I, I, regrettably, it was racist. So if the suspect was white, he was less inclined to be beaten. But he also got a beating. And then I, I saw a change come round about sort of 94, 95. And the change was that people, the cops were afraid to beat the suspects now. In fact, we used to arrest people and give them, uh, we give them a little booklet, their constitutional rights. You can't beat them with one hand and give them the book with the other hand. 
So we used to do that. We used to give them the book to when we arrested them. But the bottom line is, there are a number of policemen who are incapable. They can't do their job properly. They don't know how to do their job. And they take it personally if they can't get the better of the criminal. And they believe the only way to get the better of the criminal is to beat them. And I think they do beat them. Um, in fact, I'm certain that they beat them. I, I need to refer you to a very recently published book by Ian Cobain. It's called Cruel Britannia. Uh. You think that waterboarding, beating the living day nuts up until the guy dies, if you think that's a thing of the past, you need to read this book. It is meticulously researched. And it will... I was, I was brought up as a kid on the fact that the Nazis were the guys who used to pull their fingernails out. Well, let me tell you, after reading this book, I realized what gentlemen the Nazis were. The Gestapo were really pussycats compared to some of the things we've done in Aden, in Egypt, and in the land of the free, in America, where the Constitution rules. Okay, where Guantanamo hasn't heard of the Constitution. And it's a, it's a strange thing. What the hell does a confession mean once you've beaten it out of a client? Uh, give me, you know, as Torquemada said, give me five minutes with anybody and I'll give you to say anything you want. So if, if you really want a confession, give me half an hour with you and I'll get you to say exactly what I want. And it's something which, interestingly, uh, those of us who are a little more cynical are prepared to accept much more reason. Recently I was in the UK and I raised this issue with a true blue Brit. And he was aghast at the notion that you might use force or anything of that nature to extract a confession out of anybody. He couldn't believe it. He's, he got uncomfortable in his seat thinking about it either. Because I said to him, what are you going to do? You, you, you're sitting here. You know that a bomb is going to go off in downtown Joburg in an hour's time. You've got the suspect in front of you. He won't tell you where the bomb is. And you know there are going to be thousands of people killed. Which finger do you start with? And he got seriously uncomfortable. He said, I won't be put in that position. I said, I'm putting you in that position. Because it's happening. And what we've got to do, I've always said, we've got to box smart, not box dirty. And Paul is, I know Paul is a smart boxer. He's a, he is a smart boxer. And this is not a criticism of you, Paul. But I think there are many cops who are not as bright as you, who are not as accomplished as you, who take the shortcuts. And those shortcuts are dangerous because they lead to miscarriages of justice. And they are dressed up in some kind of scientific validity, which is in, they aren't valid. They aren't valid. Many of the techniques which are used. And they're sold to an unsuspecting court because our courts are scientifically illiterate. Let me rephrase that for you. They are scientifically totally illiterate. Right, I want to get to that with you now. I know that well, you've got to go. Always good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Paul O'Sullivan, author of uh, Catch a Clock. Good job.